Alrighty, everyone, we are live now, and we are with the developers of TerraZone Card Game. How are y'all doing today? Doing Great. pretty well. Would y'all like to go ahead and introduce yourselves? What do y'all do for the um, company and, and with the game and everything else? Of course. Um, so I'm Rob, a.k.a. I guess alias Wise Zero. Um, I act as the art director for the team and uh, concept artist slash character designer. This applies to the creature designs for the card game itself, as well as the characters that will be found within the um, uh, TerraZone Shoot for the Stars video game. Ooh, that sounds exciting. <laughs> Um, uh, joined, yeah, joined with me here is uh, Kayla slash Draco and Ryan slash Taitu. Yeah, I'm the programmer slash game uh, designer of the team. Alrighty, and um, it was Taitu you said? Uh, Taitu slash Ryan. I okay. Just call me Ryan. Yeah. Well, I do apologize. I butchered your name earlier today. Just throwing that out there. Um, oh, good. So, how how did y'all meet? How did y'all start as as a team for TerraZone? It's a good question. Uh, I guess first off, though, uh, Draco here, Kayla. She is the um, the uh, second artist on the team, and she also handles a lot of the in game art as well. She's a lot more on the technical side with the um, creating sprites, animations, and things like that. As far as meeting, um, I've known Kayla since the sixth grade, and uh, we became good friends junior year of high school. And uh, big fan. The, the game itself has taken many, many drafts, has a very long and depth history. Honestly, there could be a whole video about it. I'm not going to go into it now. <laughs> um, in the more recent years, she expressed how she wanted to help out with the project. And uh, due to that, we started working together starting in, I want to say, like 2018 is when we really started. Uh, we made Mystic Mask Media together with Ryan. And um, we started really working on Terror Zone. Yeah. And we've got it to the point it is today. Um. By any chance, could you hear what I was saying earlier? Because I was talking. No, nope. you were. Uh, oh. no. <laughs> That's really. Of course, of course. <laughs> yep. <laughs> Funny. Well, I'm glad my mic is working now. Yeah, I mean, if you'd like to go through and re say what you said. Oh, I just means. introduced myself as Kayla. That's about it. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I was yeah, confused the, uh... when people were talking. <laughs> <laughs> Yep. <laughs> yeah, she, has, she has issues with her mic sometimes. I don't know what goes on. I know, right? It has a mind of its own. But yeah, I basically, I was just saying my name is Kayla. I sometimes go by Draco and Emerald. And yeah, I heard Rob saying that we've known each other for a while there. Um, yeah, I'm the co-artist and uh, animator for Shoot for the Stars. Well, awesome. Yes. So our three-person team consists of, I'm basically the idea guy, concept dude. Ryan does all the programming, and Kayla handles a lot of the um, uh, software-related things. I mean, it sounds like you have a pretty solid team, at least. Yeah, with just three people, we're able to uh, uh, manage a whole game. <laughs> oh, yeah. Um, so, I know about the card game. However, I don't know too much about the video game aspect. Would you like to talk a little bit more about that? Of course. Um, so the card game itself, just to kind of uh, separate the two entities so people know what we're talking about. Uh, whenever we say Terra Zone Clash of Creatures, we're referring to the card game itself. Whenever we're referring to Terra Zone Shoot for the Stars, that one is the video game. The video game is going to be a massive um, one player uh, RPG game where you play as either a male or female named Sky Varian and you build friendships throughout the game, level up the said friendships, 
as well as um, taking other people on in a card battle via Terra Zone Clash of Preachers. The game will cover a um, one full school year in which many events will take place and characters will go through their character arcs. Just to give like a basic rundown of what the game was all about. Okay, so it's gonna be kind of like a um, like a retro. I don't know if retro is the term. Well, it might be now. <laughs> um, but yeah, like you know the go old Game Boy Advance games like Yu Gi Oh and Duel Masters and everything. It's gonna be kind of like I guess that where it's gonna have your actual gameplay mechanics from the actual card game on top of an RPG. Yes. Awesome. That sounds sweet. Like. Yep. <laughs> the card battles themselves will act as the battles of the game, essentially. Okay, that sounds sweet. Uh, how far into development are you with the Shoot for the Stars? Uh, we'd say probably about 10% at the moment. Okay. Yeah, it's a big, big game with a lot of meat to it, so there's a lot yeah. that's going to go into it. Um, oh. We're going to try to get a demo out. For the game a uh, playable free demo for people to try out around the uh, first quarter of next year and then we're kind of aiming for like a 2022 release probably okay. that'll probably be how long it'll take to uh, get it out there okay and that's uh just for shoot for the stars or are you also shooting for that for class of creatures or clash of click creatures who i'm sorry <laughs> <laughs> um yeah, it could... right now we <laughs> Yeah, right. Um, right now, we want to see how uh, Shoot for the Stars does, um, and then potentially consider moving on to a physical or at least an online version of uh, TerraZone from their Clash of Creatures, that is. Okay, that's that makes sense. And, I mean, at that point, you already have the basic mechanics down in whatever game engine you design, so it probably be decently easy to switch that over to an online version i can only assume that's um, a very interesting thing that's for sure yeah right <laughs> so i know y'all said y'all been working on it for a few years and you've been working with emerald for at least two however how long have you been working on shoot for the stars Shoot for the Stars uh, first began development, I want to say, let's see, it was, right, it was right after we finished Hide and Zeek. It was, uh, we took like a week or so break, and then we, um, I think we started in like June of 2000, of this year. Was it June this year? It was like May, May or yeah. June. May or June. Roughly June. Something yeah. like that. So yeah, I want to say we started development for Shoot for the Stars around, um, yeah, June of this year. Okay. We for... I'm sorry. dipped our little pinky toes into a game maker there. We released a short stealth game uh, that we called Hide and Seek, and that was to get and get familiar with like, oh, how does you know the whole process work with like uploading stuff to Steam and getting familiar with the software and everything. And yeah, that's as Rob mentioned. We had a, about a two week break, and we started development of Shoot for the Stars uh, pretty soon after. Okay, so y'all managed to get Hide and Zeek on Steam? Yep. Yes. Hide yep. and Zeek is available for download uh, the full game on Steam. Okay, that's excellent. Uh, if y'all want <laughs> to post that in the Terra Zone card game section on the Discord, that way if anyone else might be interested in it, they can go and check it out. Yeah, sure. Yeah, certainly. Okay, and I mean, four months for about 10% of the game's a pretty good feat, in my opinion. It's moving on pretty steadily, I'd say. Oh, um, yeah. No major hitches so far. Honestly, yeah. even like the devlogs, uh, we have like a weekly devlog that we write, and they actually, um, not only do they help with like keeping the general public up to date about our general progress, they keep us in check too. It's almost like kind of make, meeting a bunch of checkpoints to make sure we're on schedule with our own selves while working on this project. Yeah, that makes yeah, sense. That way we can make sure we have content to share every week on some sort of update. And now, do you all get together and, and do that yourselves? Like, obviously it's just y'all, but like, do y'all collaborate on the weekly update every week? Oh, yeah. 
Uh, yes, we do. Yep. Yep. Okay. Discord, yeah. Discord is awesome like that. We talk in here almost every day in our own uh, admin-only channel. Yeah. And, uh, yeah, we always we, we figure out what we're doing every single day. Usually our process is, like, well, we actually came up with, like, a pretty good outline, like, when we first started uh, Shoot for the Stars, and we planned out, like, the rest, like, the next six months in advance as to what we, where we want to be by, like, the end of the year, basically, and uh, we generally will start, like, at the beginning of the week, like, Monday, like, okay, this is what we want to talk about, this is what we want to show, this is what we should be doing in advance, and uh, the other unique thing about our devlogs, actually, we add a little character to them you might have noticed from our banner that there's like uh, i think like six different characters there's like two variants of our main character and then the other um club members that are part of the game and usually uh, those characters kind of switch between like a different skit almost like i almost think of them as like those old newspaper strips where it was like maybe like four panels and then there's like a gag <laughs> that's in them so we'll start it off with like you know funny humorous way and then it gets into the more technical or artistic side of things that we've been working on okay that's really creative and that's probably helps draw in the reader a little bit more too i can only assume <laughs> yeah we have a few people a little addicted to them now, so. <laughs> yeah to the point they were reading in our uh general chat yeah oh nice i mean hey Starting that's all the new yeah that's really really good i mean at least it's keeping the people and all your potential potential players in check sorry if i keep messing up my words it's been a a long <laughs> oh, long sure. day oh, yeah, it's I've very understandable <laughs> yeah, non-stop play tests until since one o'clock today so okay big day yeah, I saw y'all playing Tabletop Simulator all day. I wasn't sure if y'all were just prepping or if y'all were actually playing it or, or anything. Yeah, we, um, like in tying in with eTable Con, we've uh, not only been talking about it, but we were also saying like, hey, for anybody that wants to join in on the convention slash playtest Terror Zone, let's, uh, you can sign up to the schedule sheet. So um, it's similar. We actually did that last time too when we, had uh, our eTable con with you, which, by the way, thank you again for hosting all of this and putting it together. It's uh, greatly appreciated. And uh, yeah, more and more people have been discovering not only Terror Zone, but also discovering like these online conventions because of it. Yeah, I'm just glad I can at least help a little bit with oh, yeah. everything. I mean, as especially, I'm not going to say, I guess, new because y'all y'all been around for a while but i don't i don't know the term but yeah just helping out everyone and everything's but really working. awesome and also oh, getting yeah. to see y'all's you know amazing stuff like i don't know about hide and zeke and everything so i think it's a it's a win-win it brings people to y'all and allows me to see more you know more content <clears throat> absolutely i know you've been uh... <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I know you've been a pretty busy bee too, like making all the different games and stuff. So I'm sure you can definitely understand where that kind of comes from. Oh yeah, definitely. Now, I did see that y'all have a, I'm assuming a company website, a Mystic Mask Media. Is that an official company or is that a company? I don't know what the term would be, like, company to, to be, company in training. Okay. <laughs> we, we are actually a, an official business. I registered Mystic Mask Media back in, I think it was 2018. like... 2018. Yeah, 2000, yeah, July of 2018. So we are, like, an official uh, business. Okay, awesome. Um, on... It's still up and coming, but we are technically official. Okay, <laughs> I... Kind of a side note, if you don't mind, I'd like to ask you a little bit about that offline. Sure. Cool. Um, sure. Now, going back to the game and everything, um, what initially inspired the idea of TerraZone, Clash of Creatures, and also Shoot for the Stars? That's a good question. Um, 
Uh, you can start definitely... with the of creatures because it kind of led into Shoot for the Stars. Yeah, yep. pretty much um, Shoot for the Stars is inspired by everything Clash of Creatures was, plus one. So I'll go over um, Clash of Creatures first. I found pretty early on in life I really liked collectible aspects for um, any type of like collectible cards, figures, anything like that. It started off with, I think it was like, Go-Go's Crazy Bones. I used to, I, I collected like the original 60. I just liked the whole like list of all the little things you can get. Uh, that transferred into Pokemon, which got me into the, um, into my Eastern influences, like the, uh, where I get like inspiration from anime and manga. Um, so that further fueled the, uh, the whole interest in collecting, in this case, creatures. Um, then, um, Yu-Gi-Oh! came in af shortly after that, and that's when I was like, oh, I want to take my collectible creatures and turn it into a game. So I made, like, the very first draft of creatures ever. It was called Creatures back in the day. Uh, the first draft of what TerraZone is now, back in, like, 2001, but it was a messy game and it was terrible. Um, Yu-Gi-Oh clone essentially. <laughs> yeah, the major, the major to cut the cut the big giant story short. Uh, the major influences were Pokemon, Yu-Gi-Oh, and uh, Card Fight Vanguard. Short, uh, sometime later on, I took, I borrowed like little ideas from all three of them and formed my own original game out of them, keeping in mind what they did right, what they, I feel they did wrong, all that good stuff. Um, so shoot for the stars is basically. All of those plus Persona, because we're making a, uh, a big RPG game where a character can form relationships with other characters, uh, buff stats up, and you can even uh, date a character that you really like uh, near the end of the game if you max them out. So that, yeah, those would be the, uh, the major four, I would say. Okay. Uh, oh, I could also add to that being that one of the biggest challenges of, of uh, Shoot for the Stars, which we really wanted to achieve this, is like a lot of card game anime that's out there, as well as like just stories in general are often very uh, influenced by like a supernatural aspect of some sorts, and um, we wanted to make a slice of life game, like actual people like literally enjoying a game <laughs> and make it like an interesting like, oh no, these are just regular people, but they all have like their own unique personalities like um we have son wendy shikaku Haley, and then sky who's your main character that you play as throughout the game and yeah they're they all got their unique little personalities so uh, which can be seen through the devlogs you get kind of a taste of what they're like in advance of when the demo comes out and uh we succeeded uh with our outline it's actually an ordinary slice of life that we feel has like an interesting kind of relatable um, aspect to it and it gets its name shoot for the stars because the theme of the game is supposed to be about be making yourself a better person and the game goes through different arcs of not only better in yourself but also the friends that are around you okay that sounds completely unique and original compared to almost any type of card game video game adaptation I think would be the correct term for that but yes like that sounds really interested um are y'all going to be sharing that demo on release on eTableCon's TerraZone card game section uh, we do have our devlogs that are posted there and we can post like more screenshots and like gifs and stuff that we've made too to make that easier to find them so um, we gave you a banner, which is kind of showing on repeat here on the stream. <laughs> um, but yeah, we definitely got some interesting like little gifts, and uh, Ryan here has been doing a fantastic job making some very interesting looking menus in the game so far. Yep. Alrighty, so we found out what Zero, or what inspired Zero to make this, but... Um... Is it Tatu? Sorry, I'm. Uh, 
Ty, Ty two. Ty two. I'm I'm sorry. <laughs> yeah. Ty two and yeah. Emerald. Okay. What brought right. y'all to become a part of the Terra Zone team, working with Zero and forming the company? Um. Well, for me anyway, um, the biggest aspect is uh, my passion in general is game design. Um. So uh, I just really wanted to help Rob out with that aspect um my major um play in all of this i suppose uh, you could say is um in shoot for the stars the idea originally um being that one of the big things that always bugged me with those um older card game games is generally all you did was you went around you picked a face of a character you wanted to play mm -hmm. And at the end of the day, all you did was you would just play the weakest character over and over again to get money and just buy packs. And that's boring. Nobody wants to just grind that repetitively. Um, so I came up with the idea of taking a Persona approach to it, kind of limiting your time with the game. So there's only so many resources you can gain to buy packs and get through the game with. Um, so I thought that would make the approach to the game less repetitive, more interesting, and create a more unique experience for players throughout their playthrough of the game okay how about you emerald it could even go as far back as when i first met rob in middle school i remember being very fascinated by his art and uh when we became friends um that's when he showed me his creatures comics and i remember being very very captivated by his uh story i thought it was very interesting i liked his designs um they've even inspired some of like my own creatures that i've designed because like one of my favorite things to draw is animals and also like made up creatures like it could practically be called an obsession <laughs> and uh, especially dragons if you couldn't tell oh man <laughs> um so like after being introduced to that story uh, shortly after he turned his card game into like uh, I guess you could call like a loose, like rough draft of a card game on index cards, and we had the opportunity to play it in person. And like I felt, I literally, I like fell in love with every aspect of this game, the story, and everything. And uh, I always wanted to help him in some way. And many years later, um, after you know we graduated college and stuff, he mentioned he wanted to come back to the project. He actually like he put it on hiatus for a bit, and he was so certain he was going to drop it at some point but he's like you know what no i want to continue doing this project so he brought it back and uh uh shortly after he brought it back that's when he was working with like ryan on it on um, a program called lackey at the time and i pitched it to him that it would probably be a good idea to maybe start a business so that was actually like my idea was to turn it into like a business idea and uh we collaborated with some friends over the years like there's actually some guest artists that contributed artwork to the game and um, we officially licensed the business i had some friends of mine that are pretty savvy and like what to do how to establish an llc the do's the don'ts blah 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 so um having some connections there it helped to make some good decisions and learn through the process and um then i kind of volunteered as like animator and Rob was like, yeah, sure, you know? Yeah, and, I'm uh, not good at animation. <laughs> that's where the shoot for the, much better for that. Shoot for the Stars thing came in, and also the co-artist thing, since, like, since I also do, like, a lot of creatures, I, we both, like, sometimes we snowball ideas back and forth. Like, there's times we've gone to conventions and in person where it's, like, maybe, like, a few hours of a drive, and we're, like, sitting there, we're just talking, we're like, so, creatures. And we're like, yeah, let's, uh do this and then like the idea will just turn into like a big card effect sometimes even an archetype <laughs> just on the car ride to the convention <laughs> oh, and, oh yeah just that could be like really that. Fun. so yeah it was basically like my idea to start the business and uh kind of turn it into a more i guess legitimate thing um because it can be it can be hard like when you don't know like where to start and i had some friends that were experienced with business and i was like hey rob want to talk to them you know, you've been working on this thing for a while. And Rob was like, yeah. <laughs> and that's how that kind of ended up. So that's where all of our different uh, webs kind of came together and unified at a certain point. Okay. 
<clears throat> Sorry about that. All good. So, how for for those that are watching, um, obviously there's picture of your gameplay that keeps showing up on the stream. How exactly does your game play? Um, so, the thing that separates this game from other games is uh, that it has a very huge emphasis on its card placement. I almost like to describe it as like a hybrid card game and board game because of that. And the goal of the game is to attack empty columns and deplete your opponent's reserves uh, down to zero. And the reserves are three cards that you select at the beginning of the game. And those, as you take damage, you can actually play the cards from it. It's similar in a way to, uh, I guess, like Vanguard Shield System slash like Pokemon's Prize System. In a way, it's like a fusion of the two ideas. It's and a little closer to uh, how it's... I think Duel Masters works with the. Uh, yeah. It was. Actually, it, was yeah. it was specifically inspired by Y Cross. Mm. Yeah. That as well. Yeah. Yeah, that as well. Kind of like different takes on those things. So yeah, you. Uh, Depending on where you place things, you can create uh, squads with your fighting creatures. So, like, when cards are next to fighting creatures, they get buffs and certain effects that happen when um, you form, like, these uh, different squads on the board. So you can have, like, multiple squads of fighting creatures with unique effects, depending how you put them together. Almost like putting a puzzle together as you're putting the game, as you're playing the game. Yeah, yeah, as you as you uh, play cards to the board, your terrain starts off with an arrow scheme, and uh, that whatever whatever an arrow is pointing to, that tells you where you can play a card from your hand. So as you play more cards, they have arrows of their own, so it's like a domino effect. You'll just uh, play one card, which will lead you to play another card, which will lead you to play another card, until you keep going and going and going. And then you're basically just playing cards to the board to attack and defend your uh, reserves, which act as your uh, hit points. Anything you'd like to add to that, Ryan? Uh, no, it basically covers it. Yeah, I agree. More or less. I remember playing it. Um, last time eTableCon was around, and I remember enjoying it thoroughly. If we have some extra time, unfortunately, I can't stream it due to whatever yeah, yeah. issues. Yeah. Um, however, during any spare time, if y'all would like to, I'd be more than happy to play test it as well. Just saying, because I do remember it was fun, and it's a very, very unique gameplay compared to, I think, just about every card game I, I've played, so. Yeah, no. I remember you had streaming um, the gameplay, kind of similar to like how you have it here, except it's more separated into multiple days. Yeah, yeah we can do, uh, there, we, we had the three-day thing, right, where it's like there are today's Q&A, so tomorrow's <laughs> gameplay, third, and the third day is uh, just like wrap-up, right? Yeah. Yeah. Yep. So, like, tomorrow we could follow up with, like, some gameplay to uh, show, like... Because we, we updated a few things since last time, and we've vastly improved, like, oh, yeah. what what it was before to the point that, like, everybody today really enjoyed themselves. Okay, Which was really awesome. quite spectacular. <laughs> yeah. It's always good to hear that after working so long on something. Because we wanted to make sure the game itself was fun before we go and, you know, work further into the, um, a video game that uses that as its battle system. You know, you, you definitely want to make sure that's going to be, uh, mm -hmm. that'll be fun enough for everyone to keep doing it over and over again. Yeah. Now, speaking of the battle system, since this game, from what I've gathered, Shoot for the Stars is going to be uh, essentially, what, coded from the ground up correct like uh all custom with your gameplay being so unique what do you think the challenges are for implementing this type of gameplay style into the actual video game um honestly the 
um, actual mechanics of the game itself aren't particularly complex. Um, the hardest part is always, in any card game, uh, is coding in the effect system for it. Um, but as far as the placement mechanics and all of that, um, it's actually not not that challenging. Um, it doesn't add too much more complexity uh, to the system. Okay. Well, that's good. And as we have it uh, planned, like the JRPG side of things, like it's very... Uh... As expected, very story driven, so there's not like anything that's like overly complex, as Ryan was saying. It's mostly like a lot of it, uh, the complexity is mostly into like the battle system itself, whereas like it's almost like you're, you know, you're kind of ebbing and flowing as you're going through the game. So, like, um, you know, you're doing a lot of thinking as you're playing the game, but then like when you go back to like the story mode, you're thinking more about like, okay, what's my ne next task that I want to do this day and kind of plan it out. Um, uh, since it's a school year, we actually even have like a calendar system, so you can plan ahead of like, oh, who do I meet on certain days? You know, what can I do this week, this month? Um, what quota do I need to meet? You know, maybe by the end of the week, um, things like that. So like a different way of thinking in the the story mode side of things. Yeah, similar to the Persona games, you'll have a certain amount of time to accumulate enough resources or to accomplish goals. And with every arc, there's a, like, major goal that you have to accomplish. So it's all about uh, budgeting your time. Yep. Because you only get... It's just the one school year, and then after that, you can play again. <laughs> and yeah. experience the school year again. And, of course, there's... A t like, it can be like, oh, I dated, say, Son this game. Uh, if I restart, okay, maybe I want to date uh, Wendy instead, you know, you have that option. And then, like, yep. oh, what if I wanted to play a different deck this time? So there's, uh, there should be a lot of replay value as well. Mm-hmm. Okay, are you, do y'all have any plans for potential, I guess, the following school year, as in a sequel to the games? Uh, we've definitely had plans um, for what the sequel might look like if like this ended up being successful um the most interesting thing actually about this is it's parallel to a comic series it shares the same canon um as a comic that rob is writing yeah there's going to be a um a separate side to this story that involves different characters where Haley, who's a character in this game acts kind of like a bridge to the two different stories because she's a major character in both of them Along with the uh, video game, I'm going to be releasing a, a comic series that tells a different story, but with with some different characters. However, uh, they'll still be playing Terror Zone Clash of Creatures. So play people reading can get like a preview of like what cards can be found within the video game, and uh, vice versa. The comic and the video game kind of one can point at the other one, depending on which one you find first. The uh, I plan to do a how to play comic which i hope to release in december that way people have a readable version of the rules that they can also enjoy like a little mini story and get to know what the uh uh get to know the major characters that'll be found within the comic series as far as the comic series itself i hope to start it uh sometime next year i've been waiting for this yeah. <laughs> I've been waiting. <laughs> I've had a couple of faithful readers that are like, oh, when is it coming out? And I'm like, oh, it's coming. The, the tricky part is working with my brother. He's he's working as a uh, co-writer with me. He's helping to make the plot as good as possible and uh, make everything make sense and believe and be as believable as possible. So uh, he's, he's a teacher, so he's very busy. That's the major reason it's been stalled for as long as it has. So in the meantime, we've just been working on the video game since a lot of work has to go into that. Yeah, that makes sense. Now, in the gameplay, there are multiple affinities, correct? Yes. Yep. What are all the affinities, as well as what do they do exactly? You have, um, there'll be more in the future, but for now we have the, uh, the original four, as I like to call them. We have um, earth, wind, fire, and water, basically the elements that make up the earth. Um, Earth likes to play a very slow, grindy game where they accumulate slab counters on the board 
and um, they manipulate uh, opponent opposing attacks because the opponent risks losing willpower, which is a major resource in the game, which forces them sometimes to discard some of their own cards. So it kind of plays a little bit of like a, do you want to attack with that and lose that card? So it likes to play a very slow, grindy game. You want to grind the opponent's resources out. Uh, Wind likes to move cards around on the board, and by doing so, you get to attack directly a whole lot easier, because in um, Clash of Creatures, a fighting creature can attack directly if there's no cards with the, no cards in the opposing column that it's in. Uh, so Wind just likes to hit the cheat button and move stuff around so that they can just go in and attack directly. <laughs> Fire likes to just play all-out aggression, swarm the fields, play a whole bunch of flame tokens, which gives you more willpower, which lets you play more cards. So it just plays a really fast, aggressive game, wants to just overwhelm the opponent with a lot of attacks. And then uh, lastly, there's the Water Affinity, which likes to play a uh, control game. It creates flood tokens on the board, which limits the opponent's options in terms of playing cards. As well as, um, it also has control in the form of they can discard cards off of the opponent's board, usually support, uh, based on flood token placements. We did reveal via the devlogs that there's going to be a light and dark affinity, but we've only, uh, gone over those very briefly. So if you want to, if you want to learn a little bit about those, check out our devlog. They can be found on, uh, mysticmassmedia.com. Which... But uh, we're gonna have we're gonna have light and dark, and at least we'll have two others that we're just keeping secret for now. Uh, you were gonna say something? Uh, kind of sounded yeah. like you. Sorry. <laughs> you had a thought there. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I was I'm taking small bites in between y'all talking. I haven't really ate nice. much today. <laughs> um. It's a metaphor. <laughs> <laughs> yep. So, um, for those of you that might be wondering, you can find the website on the Discord. If you're already a part of it, just go to Terra Zone Card Game. It's under Vendors, and you can find the website listed on there a few times. Uh, if you have any issues, just scroll up a little bit, and yeah, it's, it's mysticmaskmedia.com. I'll now, even post it as, like, the newest post if they want to just get right to it. There you yeah. go. So right there when you go. visit there, you can see their company's website. So I highly recommend checking it out. It has all the latest updates and everything. Now, as for the affinities, balance in card games is a hard thing to accomplish. And oh, that yeah. being said, do you think any affinity has an upper advantage over another is it like a kind of a triangular effect one beats the other but that one beats you know the the previous one or do you think they're completely balanced um i think if there are any advantages or disadvantages at this time they may be minor we yeah. have to see because mostly we've been playing with starter decks which house a lot of vanilla creatures just to let players kind of get acquainted with the game, make it a, a little um, uh, easier to, yeah, yeah, less intimidating to newer players. Because then once you get familiar with the rules, that's when you can fill your deck up with a whole bunch of different effects that combo off of each other. <laughs> um, originally, we tried to do like an elemental square, where it was like wind was good against earth, fire was good against wind, water was good against fire. Earth was good against water, kind of like that. But we uh, changed a lot of the mechanics around, so that's not quite true anymore. Um, I think so far it seems pretty balanced. We'll have to see once we have like full structure decks playing against each other. And um, either else. way, we're either way we're aiming right now for the original four to not be like completely, you know, dominated by another affinity. Because right now it wouldn't be too fair. So if there's a real problem, we'll definitely address it. Uh, but if there's like some counterplay to it, which with the way the game is, it's very, it's very in depth. So there's a lot of counterplay that can be made to uh, kind of help in the maybe not so good matchups. I'll say for now, I think they're mostly even. There might be slight disadvantages and advantages, but nothing terribly major. 
The game okay. has a lot of variability in player choice compared to other card games. Um, so it's hard for a single deck type to dominate a, a, a different deck type just off of effects alone. And I think also, like, once you get, like, familiar with what they do as, like, what their affinity niche is, and when you, once you see, like, your opponent, like, playing whatever cards they are, even if they had, like, a mixed deck, you could kind of get a sense of what it is they're trying to do, and if you're strategic enough, you could work your way around that, and ultimately, like, even play, like, mind games with them, just to make sure you have, like, open columns, play, like, a turn, two turns ahead of time, maybe even three if you're <laughs> really paying attention. Um, oh yeah, somebody in the comments was saying, fire, cough, cough. <laughs> <laughs> fire is definitely the, um, the easy, the easy, one of the easier decks to pick up. We want to say, so far from what we've seen, uh, wind and fire are more beginner friendly. They're very basic, very aggressive, pretty easy to understand. And then water and especially earth are very tough to play, uh, compared to the other two. They require a lot more uh, thought, placement, use of their mechanics. Mm -hmm. uh, we think like fire, if it really goes off, might be the strongest, but it is a card game. It's not always going to work out that way. Uh, it does so have a major weakness. I too. guess it has like the highest ceiling, if that's what that's called. Like it can probably pop off the hardest if it gets really lucky glass cannon deck basically yeah, likewise though they have a big backlash in that their their um their flame token mechanic if you discard one of their cards in that column all their flame tokens just immediately get discarded so they they play a pretty high high risk high reward game yep so due to that nature yeah it's I, i'd say they're probably like the highest ceiling but overall i think it's still fairly balanced we'll see once dark and light enter the picture and then all the other stuff that comes out afterwards. Yeah, like we've loosely tested light and so far it's feeling pretty good. Seems to compete with yeah, all the other we, we figured out how to make light. Light definitely doesn't play like any other light themed deck you might think of. Yeah. <laughs> it plays pretty we it's a really weird deck, so it is. Uh, yeah, look forward to seeing its weirdness. Naturally it's also played by a pretty eccentric person too and shoot for the star. <laughs> Yeah, did we reveal who plays it? Yeah, I think we, we went over everybody's deck. Yeah, we did. So, so, so uh, kind of like the, the number two guy, Son, who is the um, he's the one with the glasses and the purple hair. He acts as like the host of all the dev logs. He he's uh he's the pilot of the uh, light deck. So weird character runs a weird deck. <laughs> Basically. And then, so. Uh, yeah. I'm sorry. Oh no, it's okay. I, I was just gonna say, like, um, I guess as a reminder, what everybody plays. Uh, Skies, which are the main characters, uh, where you can pick male or female. Uh, they they're whatever you want to use. Um, Shikaku, who's the like artist with the dark hair, he runs dark. Windy likes to play wind, and Haley likes to play water. Wendy like being the... the girl with the blonde hair, and Haley the red hair. Yeah. Windy playing the wind deck. That's that's yeah. surprising. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's that, it's that close to wind, so it was kind of funny. <laughs> I, always like, I always like the name Windy too because uh, the restaurant I really like, cough cough. But <laughs> um, yeah, she plays wind because it's funny. Yeah. So for those interested, are they? Do y'all have a Discord that you allow play tests and stuff like that through Tabletop Simulator? Uh, we are running a bunch of them this weekend uh, due to, like, you know, the eTableCon event, and every once in a while we open the doors for playtesting slash demonstration. Um, it's kind of like a very, like, um, far in-between thing, but we do occasionally, like, have them available. Yeah, the major reason we don't... As we would like to, but the major reason we don't open the floor up too much is because we have to focus a lot on the um, the game, it's, uh, the video game itself, and make sure we get a lot of progress done on that. Yeah. And then once that demo comes out, you can play it all till your heart's content. Right. Alrighty, so those that are watching and are interested, make sure to check out their vendor section. 
on the Discord if you are interested in playtesting this weekend. I got one more question for y'all, and I think that should wrap up or wrap up the uh, the hour more or less. Um, how many cards do you currently have finished on on the game? Um, let's see now. What did we count for the uh, the starter deck total? Was it like seventy two? Seventy two mini cards. Yeah. Yep. So they're since everything's kind of in its own phase right now in terms of the cards. Uh, we have seventy two playable cards at this time via the start with the within the starter decks. Um, I want to say about half of them, if not maybe a little more than half, are like fully finished um, artworks. And the others at least have final line work on them with just some uh, quick flat colors just so that people know what their colors are and stuff like that. The We have plans for um, a whole first... I think the first three sets, for the most part, that's going to be found in the game. Each pack's going to have, like, I guess, like, around uh, 70 to 80 cards, something like that. So, roughly 240 in that department. And then, like, loose plans, I want to say our total right now, if you're counting everything, even in the very loose idea stage, uh, we're looking at about 400-ish so far. And then there'll be a lot more to come because you'll, as you progress through the game, you'll unlock more packs, which means more cards, along with potentially some promo cards found within the game as well. And depending on how well we do with the Kickstarter, there may be even more cards. Yeah, we may okay. add even more pack. We may add like another couple packs to the game as well, so that'll be even more cards. Potentially could reach like around like 800, 900 maybe with all that in mind. Whew, that's a that's a huge goal. Now, yeah. I have a question. Well, I know I said the last one was the last one, but this one might be a little potentially harder for y'all to answer, and that is what is each one of y'all's favorite card so far? Ooh. There's a, a handful of favorite cards, so I don't know if I could pick just one. Flying pig. <laughs> yeah, I guess I'll go with flying pig. Flying pig's not in one of the decks though, so I don't know if you <laughs> really have context for it. Um, Aesthetically, I, have, I like Dragon I, Girl for reasons. <laughs> I have, yeah, I have favorites, but they're outside of the starter deck. Um, as far as the starter decks go, ooh, there's a fair bit that I like. That's the nice thing about being a creator. You can have a lot of children, but you can still pick favorites. <laughs> yeah, right. Um, mm, that's a tough call. It's a really tough call. Ooh. Like I said, it's probably the hardest question I asked tonight. Yeah, it's really tough. Like outside <laughs> of the outside of the decks, I have a very easy pick, but in the decks, it, yeah, it's tough. Right. Um. I'll go with Scarlet from Fire. I think she's cool. Yeah, she's pretty cool. And uh, Kayla, you got a favorite? In the decks. I know you said Dragon Girl, but she's not. Yeah, outside, outside of the decks, like Dragon Girl's probably my favorite. Um, but inside the decks, I found a lot of joy in punishing Rob with Ankylo. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, yeah, she like torments you with Earth. Yeah, that's probably my favorite like affinity to use as a deck right now. It's like a tie between like fire and earth, probably. Um, but aesthetics wise, I like wind because it has a lot of dragons. <laughs> <laughs> Lots of uh, dragons found in wind. That's a big all... dragon affinity if you're a dragon fan. They're all cool in different ways, but I like messing around. Like my favorite style is rogue decks so i always love like punishing the opponent with really ridiculous effects that's really why i like earth that they don't yeah. see out if they come out of left flee and you're like what is that i didn't know that was a thing earth is kind of earth and wind both are pretty unpredictable in that way it's like uh, the reason why i kind of like wind it's hard for me to decide like they're all so cool in different ways <laughs> oh man i guess if we were to say 
outside of the decks, um, I would probably go with Vortex Maiden. Yeah. She's a, she's a big name in, from the the first attempt at the pilot, and she's she's a little she can be found on the <clears throat> YouTube channel. I think I still have the art stream of working on her. Okay. Yeah. If anybody wants context of her, and same with Dragon Girl too, you can find Dragon Girl there. Flying Pig unfortunately doesn't have any official appearances yet. Oh, sort of does. What are you talking about? Oh, that's right. Yeah. That's right. He, is a, he is a cameo in one of the He's cards. He's a cameo in one of the cards. <laughs> yes, he, he does. We we do heavy. <laughs> uh, we'll just touch on that like just very slightly because I know we're running out of time. Uh, we do focus a lot too on story. Like a lot of people seem to like card lore. Uh, so we do like we every affinity kind of has its own world and like what goes on in there. Okay, how how the creatures interact with each other and what they do. So we throw a lot of little cameos and backgrounds and stuff. So yeah, you can find Flying Pig in the Member of the Sky card. Yeah, it's pretty funny actually. Uh, Member of the Sky is a uh, a bouncer outside of a nightclub, and uh, he there's this farmer that's outside of the card, and uh, <clears throat> inside the card's image you'll see there's the farmer who looks very upset because he can't get into the club, and uh, inside the club is the Flying Pig. <laughs> so you can kind of leave that to your imagination as to what the story is. <laughs> Yep. Um, it's pretty silly. And yeah, likewise, on Flank Pig's picture is the farmer once again in the background. Yeah, once he finally comes out. Pig won't be for a short while. Yeah. Unless he shows up in the comic. Like, he may show uh, up if, in I, the if comic. I start the, the main series comic, you'll, you'll, people will get a lot of previews as to what cards you'll find in uh, uh, Shoot for the Stars. That seems pretty cool. Now, once again, for those watching, um, we're about to wrap things up. If y'all are interested in this game, if y'all like games with lore, unique, um, super unique trading card games, <laughs> and soon to be a trading card RPG game, then check out mysticmaskmedia.com. It's also under the TerraZone vendor section on Discord. Actually, I post it in the Discord or on Twitch right now. If anyone's interested, you can you can go there. I think, buddy. Sorry, I got a cat in my way. Uh, that's I I know that all too well. <laughs> right. I just walked in front of the second monitor. Like, um, oh yeah. But yeah, so do y'all have anything y'all would like to uh, finish up or, you know, any outros, any anything y'all want to add for the last five minutes? Uh, if you like more if you have more news on Terrorism, Clash of Creatures, didn't catch it earlier on the uh, uh, earlier in the stream. You can check out mysticmassmedia.com for devlog updates. We do weekly updates on there via comic and a bit deep, brief description of uh, what we've been up to. There's also our YouTube channel, Mystic Mask Media, where you can find videos, as well as uh, uh, we also post quite frequently on our Twitter, which is also Mystic Mask Media. All under the same vein, and our Discord's pretty active, I'd, I'd say. It's like yeah, there's active. also our uh, Discord server. So if, you, if you're interested in joining that, you can drop on in our uh, Terror Zone channel within uh Scythian's tabletop simulator or and not then you can simulator. make a tabletop. theory about you can <laughs> make some theories about what son's true intentions are <laughs> what yeah you can make theories about what son's true intentions are based on what you read in the devlogs oh okay yeah making yeah. him out to be super mysterious now it's uh, what are you doing? he is mysterious <laughs> right he's a pretty interesting character and then, uh, yeah, we'll be back tomorrow, too. We will get to see some gameplay. Yeah. Woo! Gameplay. Gameplay. Alrighty. Well, thank y'all so much for taking the time to come out to be a vendor and also showcase your game. I'm extremely excited to watch the gameplay tomorrow. Sadly, I can't participate, but... It's all yep. good. We can, we can have, like, a... Like last time, one of us can play the other or something like that. Yep. Show our game off again. 
Sounds good. And now, once again, guys, this is Terra Card Game. And make sure to check them out under the vendor section. Thank y'all once again. And y'all have a f fantastic rest of your night. Hey, thank you. Sure. Thanks. Yeah.